Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism of Raw Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. I think I've got the configs for the Bren Energia by Papa Sid, the rebalanced one that was based on the DeQ original mod. Uh, mostly okay. On the last test we had a problem with the RCS being used too quickly. Uh, that's the main issue right now. And so I'm actually going to thrust limit it just outright. I'm using the KOS script for both launch and re-entry so that's one reason why it seems to be using too much. Actually using MechJeb's smart ASS might be more uh, more RCS happy let me put it that way so uh, so it's possible that that would work better. Uh, keep in mind that the RCS on Baren is interesting in that it actually uses the oxygen, oxygen gas, not the liquid oxygen even though the main engines use the liquid oxygen and you have to use this uh, LOX to oxygen converter to produce your oxygen gas for the RCS so that's one of those little complications uh, I've turned on all the actuation toggles so instead of uh, some of the RCS being limited uh, to doing certain things I've just for now allowed it to do everything and that uh, in the hope that that would be better off for KOS. Uh, I fixed the shader problem on the top tank here so now it's looking proper and there were other fixes including increasing the mass of Baren it was way too light before and uh, other things but uh, yeah I think we will I'll link the new configs in the video description and you can see uh, what you can do with them and they're specific to the mod so I'll put the mod that they are for uh, I'll put the link in the video description as well so we are carrying payload and it's 29.15 tons the capacity for Baran was supposed to be 30 tons we are carrying the docking port assembly in front too so that's also a thing and the additional docking port to eject the payload tank out so that's another mass alright so with all that being said uh, let's take it outside and see how it works. We are launching from Cape Canaveral. Um, probably safer Baran that way. Uh, they don't treat the Barans very nicely in Kazakhstan anyway. So run Baran. So ignition. And launch. We will be going to the typical inclination out of by Kunur that they would use, which is the same as for the ISS, around 51.6 degrees. So, normal sort of situation. I did remove reaction wheels from everything. The RO config for this originally actually added a reaction wheel that didn't even exist in the stock one uh, to this tank believe it or not for some reason so I removed that then there were reaction wheels in the cockpit and body that I had to remove so yep no sneaky reaction wheels please so might as well remember to turn on the fuel cell uh, I added a fuel cell the fuel cell runs on Sintin and liquid oxygen it's more like a generator than a fuel cell but y you understand so fuel cell and the LOX oxygen producing thing just so that we don't forget I put the separatrons as such where I thought appropriate but I have no idea whether they're correct or not they work they work quite vigorously in fact yeah people are all on about waterfall but honestly I don't mind this this looks good <laughs> This is probably for the best. I wouldn't change these, I don't think. Okay, getting ready for booster sub. And there's the very generous plumes of the Separatrons to hit this game with. But it's fine. You know, actually, uh, on the shuttle launches, they said that they could see, you know, flames uh, through the cockpit windows and everything, so. I guess. Maybe it would have been like that? I recall seeing the external tank, you know, the images of the external tank from orbit and it looked a bit toasted, so... 
not impossible. Okay, we are approaching orbit here. Everything looks good. Oh, I adjusted the tilt on the on the bits down here. It's only a five degree tilt. It's not as dramatic as it was before. So they look almost straight right now. Just very subtly tilted through the center of mass. And that produces a good balance uh, throughout. I mean, it's not as severe as it was before. And with our 30 ton payload, we basically make it just about right. And the script will take care of the separation bit. Okay, and eventually it'll come out of time warp to do the circularization. Well, it's not really a circularization burn. It'll be short of circular, but the making orbit burn. KOS in general has been has had a little bit of a trouble with the RCS, and so I do think that with smart ASS it would handle better overall. Okay, so just trying to get into orbit, and then we'll do the rest here, another ignition. We have to keep in mind that these engines, unlike the space shuttle main engines, do not have functionally infinite ignitions, only 15, and you do have to set it to the right configuration for Buran. And our periapsis, we'll bring it down a little bit so it's a one and a half hour orbit. That's for the re-entry script. So just using RCS to get us down to the right orbit. While I'm doing that, I'll open up the bay and kick out the payload. We could return with the payload. In fact, that would make us more or less like the shuttle. But Buran was much lighter than the shuttle overall. And we'll test its return like that. And pushing away. Don't ask how many of these tanks I've left in orbit. <laughs> okay, we just have to wait a day to phase back with Cape Canaveral and then we'll try and land there. But landing is is a longer topic. We'll try and survive re-entry, let me put it that way. So, previous time I actually dumped Sintin and Oxygen down to halfway first, but then we ran out of RCS because it's not perfectly balanced right now. And it's using a lot of RCS, especially since the re-entry script does um, rolls and S-turns and stuff like that. So that takes more RCS when it's not perfectly balanced. It's balanced enough, but not perfect. So we'll just keep the fuel that we've got. It is now automated, except for the actual last bit of landing. That is not automated, and probably won't be for quite a while. That's a tough thing to do. I don't know how much having all the fuel in the back is going to unbalance us. We'll see. Okay, it brought our periapsis to basically 5 kilometers, and it based that on the weight of the vehicle. Okay, it's having a fun time. I think maybe thrust limiting it might have thrown it off. Well, we'll see. Sometimes KOS can get irritated when you limit its authority. It worked better when I had not limited its authority, so that's why I'm saying that. Uh, previous times, the RCS had been going full blast, and it did not have this sort of situation going on. It's sort of getting there, but it's not quite getting there. It is like it's confused. Alright, I give up. Now it's trying to stop the roll. Okay, I think it's finally gotten a hold of itself. There we go. All right. Well, uh, now maybe I'll thrust limit it and see if it's okay with that. 
as long as it's not doing any major moves, maybe it's okay. Well, it is doing some turns, as you can see, in order to uh, kill some extra energy in this case, because we're going a little, we're overshooting a little bit right now. But it's better to have more energy than too little. Overall, the RCS is not puffing crazily, but it is being used. So you can't really see the puffs, but if you take a look at the centin and oxygen consumption, it is being consumed. And the oxygen in particular is being consumed faster than we're producing it, which is an important piece of information, right? We only have a certain amount of production capacity on that. Um, I mean, we're not really using our authority very much, but we're using the RCS. Hopefully that doesn't go too far. Oh, and one thing that happens is the parachute always blows up. I don't know what it is with me and shuttles, but the parachute always, well, not the parachute, but the thing that's most like, least, sorry, the thing that's least likely to actually explode, the one that's most shielded, always happens to be the part that explodes. So this parachute has no earthly reason to be the thing that gets overheated at all. And I put a decent amount of heat tolerance on it. I upped the heat tolerance on a lot of things. But there it is, getting too hot again. Another thing that, well, the engines should definitely not be overheating, but they too are overheating. Yeah, I just don't like the way the oxygen is ticking down. It doesn't matter if we have a whole bunch of RCS fuel, if that, uh, or oxidizer if that oxidizer can't be converted to the oxidizer that we need, right? We've got liquid oxygen, that's great and all, but if it can't be converted fast enough, that's going to be a problem. Well, we lost the parachute. <laughs> Even right now in our mostly balanced state with using only a little bit of authority, it's not replenishing the oxygen. Oh, no, no, it's going up. Uh, well, no, it's iffy. So maybe I should up the rate that that can replenish the oxygen. Because, I mean, otherwise the Kerbal is going to die from lack of oxygen <laughs> if it consumes all of it using the RCS. And of course, if it runs out, if we turn off the RCS, it'll be out of control. So, hmm. Okay, we've got overheating on the body flap and on the rudder. Oh, no, not the body flap. It's actually the left RD-58. But I think we're going to be trending upwards for a little bit. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. It'll cool down, basically. Well, overall, right now, we are looking good in terms of the RCS. But we are falling short now, so this needs to be some tuning for this re-entry script. We can't just take the shell's re-entry script as is, it looks like. But yeah, right now we're headed into Yucatan, as far as it knows. And that's obviously not what's supposed to happen. Okay, we're breaking below 55 kilometers in altitude. And with my luck, we're going to end up in the Gulf of Mexico. That's just how it happens. But yeah, re-entry will need adjustment. But the point is that this Baran has survived re-entry. And we can potentially make a landing. So as far as the scripts are concerned, you can take a look at the pitch and yaw here. Those are balanced. It's trying to roll because... It's trying to roll, but we'll see if that goes out of control or anything. But yeah, everything seems to be working right now. And that means that as far as I'm concerned, I'll link the script. So the way it'll be zipped up is so that you can overwrite the relevant files. If you try and unzip and it doesn't ask you to overwrite anything, you're probably doing something wrong because it is definitely... Uh, 
needing to overwrite the original RO configs. That's mainly what gets overwritten. And then there's one file that gets added, which is the textures unlimited config for the upper tank of the external tank. So that corrected the shader problem on it. At this point, I'll give it full RCS authority just in case. Uh, I don't anticipate running out, and our control surfaces should be good enough for everything at this point. Though, I don't know why Roll is inactive on these. So do check what's active and inactive on the control surfaces just in case. I had just slapped those on, but it looks like they were only told to do pitch, which would be wrong, of course. Those elevons have to do roll as well. Well, so the outer portions of them, but they're not separated, so. And actually, just as soon as I did that, it seems like our roll situation became much more balanced. The rudder is only doing yaw. I mean, I think this means the yaw is active. <laughs> it's always a little bit counterintuitive when the button is pr uh, visibly pressed in that makes it look like that's active. Okay, it's starting the standard pitch down maneuver. Everything is correctly balanced. The reason the pitch is being used is because it is pitching down. It looks like it maxed out the pitch though, so it didn't pitch down as quickly as it needed to. Again, the dynamics are a bit different for this than the shuttle, it seems. Okay, well, we are diving down seriously, and eventually it's going to hand it over to me. Okay, so now I'm in control. Uh, I don't feel a whole lot of pitch authority. I'm trying to pull up, mainly. Yo! Uh, okay, let me turn off RCS. That's just annoying. Feels very nose heavy. I'm trying to pitch up as much as I can. We're going pretty fast. Let me try atmospheric. Auto oh, I don't have atmospheric autopilot. Oh, this is not good. We're plunging down very firmly. Oh, just as I said, it worked. Ah, uh, why can't it pull up? I may need to give it more lift on some things. Okay, well, so we're not quite ready for prime time, but I'll give it to you anyway. Sorry, Kerbals. So, okay. I'll probably make a tweak before giving it to you, but like I said, still work in progress. I decided to record because I thought I had gotten it close enough, and that, that's because I thought re-entry was the main problem. And it turns out maybe we have other problems. So the way it was, it seemed like it was way, way, way nose heavy, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because we still had fuel in the tail. And we didn't have any payload, and the center of lift should be pretty far back. The only thing I did to touch up the lift was actually to reduce the lift on the on the cockpit, which means that that net net would have moved the center of lift back. But maybe I should restore that so that the center of lift moves forward. If the center of mass is pretty far forward, then that would help. So I'll just uh, revert that change. Maybe that'll throw things off, maybe not. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll work on this, but I'll give you what I've got. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.